Hello and welcome to Clicking Keys. I'm Bugs and in this video I'll be covering AppleScript handlers. Handlers may also be referred to as functions or routines in other languages, but in AppleScript they're commonly referred to as subhandlers or handlers. A handler is a collection of AppleScript statements that you give a descriptive name and then activate by using that name. Handlers are useful in scripts that perform the same action multiple times as you can call it from anywhere in the script as many times as you wish. This can make the script shorter and much easier to maintain. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll cover a couple tips that you'll want to know when writing your own handlers. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to write a sample function. We're going to start with the keyword on, then I'm going to give it a name, do math, and then in parentheses I'm going to give it any available arguments that I want. So I'm going to use num1, num2, and mathfunk. This will allow you as the developer to call this multiple times with different arguments. And then lastly, we'll end the handler with the end and then repeat the name do math. Now that we've got the basic structure of the handler created, it's time to write the statements inside it that do the work. So I'm going to write if mathfunk equals plus, then return num1 plus num2. Else if mathfunk equals minus, then return num1 minus num2. Else if mathfunk equals star or asterisk, then return num1 times num2. Else if mathfunk equals forward slash, then return mat num1 divided by num2. Else, and this will be our catch all error, you must supply a proper math function to use this handler. Please try again. And now I'll put a try block around the whole thing so we can capture any errors that happen and display them to the user. If you'd like to learn more about try blocks, you can watch my error handling video in the link above. In case you're wondering, I've used the special keyword return several times in this handler. That basically tells the handler to exit at that point and send the value after the word return back to where the original call was made. Let's see what this looks like in practice. So I'll make a call to our handler. I'll say do math and then we'll change the variables to some actual values. And then I'll capture the result of that call in a variable called the results. So I'll say set the result to do math 8 2 plus. And then if we zoom back I'll log the result and we can see that we get an answer of 10. So now I'll copy and paste the call to the handler multiple times but change the operator and we'll keep logging the results so you can see the difference every time I run it with the different operator it performs the different math functions. I'll even add an error intentionally here so you can see the result of our error handler inside our handler. Okay, I want to pause for a second and just illustrate to you how your script processes statements. So I've added some animations. So first we'll start at the top, we'll jump down into the handler when we call it, we'll process those statements, jump back up, process the next few statements which calls the handler again, we jump down into the handler, process the handler statements, and so on and so forth. We'll just keep looping through these uh, different steps until we've completed the entire script. Okay, you saw what happened when I processed the error without an operator to find that the script knew about. Now let's see what happens when a real error happens when I try to divide by zero. So you see we get the same error handling with the display dialog, but it shows the error message it ran into rather than my custom error message I supplied earlier. As promised, here are a few items you need to be aware of when you're writing your handlers. First, you want to make sure that the order of your parameters matches in your call the same way that it was written in your handler itself. So in my example, you can see I have do math 8, 2, and then the operator, and I matched that order every single time I called that handler. Second, you'll want to make sure that the number of parameters you supply when calling your handler matches the number that have been created during the definition of the handler. The third tip I have for you has to deal with the my keyword. In front of your handler call, you can place the word my. That will help prevent any problems you may have when calling your own handler within other tell blocks. So for example, if I was in a tell block that was telling numbers to perform some operation, and I had my own handler call within that tell block, if I don't prefix it with the word my, your script will think you're trying to tell numbers to do whatever the name of your handler is. And the last thing I wanted to remind you about as it relates to handlers is variable scope. You can check out a little bit more information about variable scope in my variable video, um, but basically you need to make sure that you either pass your variable in as a parameter to your handler 
define it as a property or define it as a global. Otherwise, your handler will be unaware of what that variable means unless it's defined within the handler itself. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and check out my other videos on my channel. Thanks again.